Hi everyone, so we're going to do, I guess, two, maybe three examples involving curve sketching. Uh, if you've looked at the videos in the YouTube channel that are there already, you might have noticed there are some sound problems. So I figured this is a good opportunity for us to try out this lightboard equipment and, and do a few videos, a few new videos for you. Um, so we'll do three examples. We'll start simple with a polynomial example. And we're going to do one that uh, you might remember from doing your standards exercises in class. I didn't ask you to sketch it, but I did ask you to compute the first and second derivatives, find the uh, critical points, the inflection points, and all of that information that we need to produce the sketch. All right. So first of all, we might, before we proceed to the derivative, we might say, well, what kind of information can we get from the function itself? And we can draw a sine diagram for for f, and sometimes that's useful just to know where the zeros are, um, asymptotes, if any. Of course, this is a polynomial. There are no asymptotes. Um, but we can draw our, our number line. We have two zeros, right? There's one at 0. There's one at 2. Those are our x-intercepts. And of course, since there's an x-intercept at 0, that's also the y-intercept. And then we mark off our signs in each interval. So uh, everything is positive out here to the right of 2. Um, and because this is an even power, we don't get a sign change at 2 because we're, you know, x minus 2 becomes a negative, but it's squared, so it stays positive. Um, at 0, we do get a sign change because x switches from positive to negative. The cube is still negative. So we get a sign diagram that looks like this. OK, so we'll, we'll put that information aside. We'll make use of it later. We're going to want to plot those x-intercepts when we are ready to draw the graph. The next step is to move on to the derivative because we're going to be looking for critical points. We want to know if they are maxima or minima. Um, now, in this case, <coughs> you could decide that you want to multiply everything out here. So you just have to use the power rule to take the derivative. But it's going to be easier to do the product rule plus, well, chain rule for the second term because once we've taken the derivative, we need to factor so that we can figure out where the zeros are. Um, and we'll find that it's easier to factor if we do the product rule. So derivative of the first term, 3x squared times the second. And then the first times the derivative of the second. Right. And What's nice about this is we can factor because this x minus 2 appears in both terms, and the x squared also appears in both. Right? So if we factor those out, we have an x squared, we have an x minus 2, and now we write down what's left over. So what's left over is, let's see, um, we've got a 3. times x minus 2. And then we've got a 2 and an x. Okay, So let's simplify that. We have x squared, x minus 2. And then we've got 5x minus 6. All right. So now I can write down the sine diagram for the derivative. And it's going to look something like this. Uh, so we have our number line. And we have critical points at the intercepts, right? So 0 is also a critical number, because f prime of 0 is equal to 0 when x is 0. And f prime is still 0 when x equals 2. But we get one more 0, right? When this factor here, when this factor is 0, we get a critical number there. And that's going to be equal to 0 when x is 6 over 5. And that is about right here. So 6 over 5. Okay. And again, we mark off our sign changes. This time, x minus 2, we can see, is now an odd power. So we do get a sign change at 2. We get another sign change at 6 over 5. 
And our third critical point at zero, we can see the even power there, so we don't get a sign change. So we get something that looks like that. And that tells me that I'm, I'm, I'm increasing here. Right? I'm increasing here, so the graph is still going up. Uh, then I'm decreasing. So I know that I have a local maximum at 6 over 5. And then at 2, I switch from decreasing back to increasing. And so I know I have a minimum at 2. So I have all that good information. Oh. Now we move on to the second derivative, which is, um, well, it's a bit of work to be honest. It's probably easier to work up here on the second derivative. It probably doesn't look like it, but um, I think that's going to be our, our easiest option. So we have, in the first term, it's going to be product rule on both. So 6x times x squared minus 2 squared, derivative of this part. Now the derivative of that, I get 6x squared times x minus 2. Then I'm going to get, uh, well, remember we have this 2 here. So 2 times the derivative of x cubed, that's another 6x squared times x minus 2. And then finally, we just do the derivative of the last part. We get a 2x cubed. OK. So this one is going to be a little bit more work to factor. Let's see what we get. Um, what's common? Well, there's still an x that's common to all of them. And I guess there's a 2 that's common as well. So we can, at the very least, take out the 2x. And we can see what's left over. We're going to have 3 times x minus 2 squared. 6 plus 6, 12, but there's a 2 out front, so 6x, x minus 2, and then x squared. OK. It's going to be a bit of work. Oh, sorry. 2x times. OK, so this is x squared minus 4x plus 4. Multiply everything by 3. 3x squared minus 12x plus 12 plus 6x squared minus 12x. And then we have one more x squared. I have a feeling that this is not going to factor so nicely. But let's, let's clean it up and see what we got. OK, so we have. 3 plus 6 plus one more, 10x squared minus 24x plus 12. That doesn't look like a lot of fun to factor. So you know what we're going to do? Let's graph what we have so far. And if we need to worry about inflection points, we'll come back to it. We really should probably use quadratic formula to split this up. But that doesn't look like a lot of fun. So why don't we set it aside for the moment? And let's start looking at our sketch. So when we're drawing the graph of a function, you're not being marked on artistic merit. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're showing all the important features of the graph. So we need to mark off our intercepts. So we need to mark off our intercept at the origin, 1, 2. Our intercept at the point, 2, 0. And now we know that we have this maximum at 6 over 5. And I guess one of the things that we might want to calculate is, well, what is the f value there at 6 over 5? Um, well, that's, that's going to be not so much fun to calculate, right? Um, it's 6 over 5, all cubed. Um, 6 over 5 minus 2 is minus 4 over 5 squared. Um, 
So this is this is not so great, right? It's it's six cubed times four squared over five to the five. Uh, you can punch that into your calculator if you want. It's going to be I don't know. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of one. I'm not sure exactly where it is. Let's let's say one. Um, that's probably wrong, but. Um, we won't worry about scale. We can, we can cheat. We just won't put a Y scale down. Um, OK, so let's mark that point. So we have this point at 6 over 5. It's around here. And let's say it's uh, something like that, OK? Um, so this is at 6 over 5. And well, let's just call it F of 6 over 5. That's a little bit easier to write down. OK. And so now let's see if we can figure out what happens. We have a max here. We have a min here. And we're going to pass through 0. So what is it going to look like? Well, we can come over and look at the sign diagram for f prime. We can see that we should be increasing on both sides of 0. So we should be going up through that intercept. And we should increase all the way to the maximum at 6 over 5. Then we decrease down to 2, hit that minimum, and we come back up and we head down. So we get something that looks like that. Now, there is, there is one thing that we have to watch for here. Somewhere in here, there is an inflection point. right? So if we want to be completely accurate, we should find that inflection point. And that means we should come back to here, and we should try to factor the second derivative and figure out what's going on there. Um, and, and I may have actually even missed something here, because we have an inflection point at 0. So maybe it goes concave down, and then concave up, and then concave down again. So if we really wanted to work that out, We'd have to come here to the quadratic formula and sort that out. Um, that's probably not going to play well on the video, is it? So probably what we should have is something, if we were going to fix this graph, we should probably have something that looks like this. There should be a little bump in the graph there like that. I think we get something that looks like that. There is that little switching concavity there. And the way we'd find that point, and it would be around here, this point and that point, that would be by taking the quadratic formula, solving for x in this quadratic, and get the two x values. We'd find that one of them is here, one of them is there. We get the y values. But it's going to be messy. It's going to be calculator work. It's not, these are not numbers that we're going to try and calculate by hand. Um, so, you know, not numbers that you would see on a test, if that makes you feel any better. Okay, that's it for the first example. We'll clean the board and we'll move on to the next one.